New teams often experience growing pains. Members of any team can't work efficiently together without having any time to get acquainted with each other. In 1965, psychologist Bruce Tuckerman developed an easy-to-digest model that shows how teams in various fields go through the same stages of group development. Learning these five stages of team development will allow you to shape successful teams that perform to their best potential. Tuckman's model identifies the five stages through which groups progress as forming, storming, norming, performing, and of course, adjoining. Each of these five stages of team development represents a step on the team building ladder. As the group members climb the ladder, they morph from a random assembly of strangers into a high-performing team that can work toward a common goal. In the performing stage of team development, members feel satisfaction in the team's progress. They share insights into personal and group process and are aware of their own as well as each other's strengths and weaknesses. Members feel attached to the team as something greater than the sum of its parts. And they feel satisfaction in the team's effectiveness. Members feel confident in their individual abilities and of those of their teammates. The team members are able to prevent and solve problems in the team process or in the team's progress. A can-do attitude is visible as are offers to assist one another. Roles on the team may have become more fluid with team members taking on various roles and responsibilities as needed. Differences among members are appreciated and used to enhance the team's performance. In the performing stage, the team makes significant progress towards its goals. Commitment to the team's mission is high and the competence of the team members is also high. Team members should continue to deepen their knowledge and skills including working to continuously improve team development. Accomplishments in team process or progress are measured and should be celebrated. Teams perform at their peak because of collaboration. You can think of collaboration as the grease that makes teams work. Workplace collaboration is the cornerstone to building great teamwork. Collaborative teams work together to brainstorm new ideas, complete expansive projects, and achieve their goals. At its most simple, the collaborative team is one that accomplishes more together than the individual team members could on their own. In order for teams to be able to work together effectively, you have to be willing to ask questions, dig into specific points, and even disagree in order to move work forward. Though being a collaborative team means co-creating to build better solutions, listening to input from other team members, and working together towards your goals. When team members are working together, they are constantly involved in each other's work because they are contributing to joint initiatives or problem solving together. Team members need to share and talk about their work, which leads to increased team-wide visibility. Team members may feel a variety of concerns about the team's impending dissolution. They may feel some anxiety because of uncertainty about their individual role or future responsibilities. They may feel sadness or a sense of loss about changes coming to their team relationship. And at the same time, team members may feel a sense of deep satisfaction at the accomplishments of the team. Individual members might feel all of these things at the same time or may cycle through feelings of loss followed by feelings of satisfaction. Given these conflicting feelings, individuals and team morale may rise or fall throughout the ending stage. It is highly likely that at any given moment, individuals on the team will be experiencing different emotions about the team's ending. During the ending stage, some team members may become less focused on the team's tasks and their productivity may drop. Alternatively, some team members may find focusing on the task at hand is an effective response to their sadness or sense of loss. Their task productivity may increase. The team needs to acknowledge the upcoming transition and the variety of ways that individuals and the team may be feeling about the team's impending dissolution. During this stage, the team should focus on the completion of any deliverables. 
the evaluation of the team's progress, and of course, creating a closing celebration that acknowledges the contributions of individuals and the accomplishments of the team. It is sad to say, but only about 4% of companies worldwide always document their processes. Imagine this, your team is starting a project that's new to all of you. You have heard through the grapevine that your company successfully tackled something similar just a couple of years ago. The only problem, nobody on your current team was actually around during that time. Those people have since moved on, and now you are left wondering how to bridge this knowledge gap. It feels an awful light like closing your eyes and throwing a dart at a board. Now imagine it instead if you had resources that you could turn to. What if that previous team had kept detailed records like project timelines and plans, meeting summaries, step-by-step -step processes, sketches, roadmaps, and more? If that was the case, you would be equipped with a well of valuable information that you could draw from. Even if you end up doing things somewhat differently, at least you would feel like you had an educated starting point. Suddenly, that new project wouldn't seem quite so daunting. Situations like this happen all the time. Many organizations still view documentation as an optional formality. According to a recent survey, only 4% of companies worldwide claim that they always document their processes. Employee recognition has long been a cornerstone of effective management. But today, as the competition for talent escalates, the ways organizations show that they value their employees has become more important than ever. Creating a recognition program is a start. So if you don't have one, that's a good first step. But great companies go further, constantly reevaluating the ways that they should reward employees. As companies grow, this becomes even more of a challenge and leaders must rethink the way they add value to employee recognition experience. Employees who are not recognized for their contributions feel as if management doesn't care about their input and that they are playing favorites, only recognizing those they like. Many companies fail to recognize their employees and teams fail to recognize their team members. This lack of support often results in ill feelings by employees against the team and ultimately interferes with their willingness to participate in team activities. Every week, we upload new videos between five and 10 minutes in length, where we will focus on the strategic implementation of Lean and Six Sigma. As a Six Sigma expert, I am passionate about quality. And if you are too, then click subscribe to be notified whenever we upload our next Lean Six Sigma video.